in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Very well, welcome to St Mary's this morning. And we have a chance to reflect upon the great wonder of walking on water this morning. And while you might be um, uh, tempted to think this is about uh, the mighty Ipswich town being top of the championship, it's good for one week at least, uh, there are in fact much more important things. We reflect on uh, Jesus uh, walking through the storm on the water and the fact that he bids Peter to join him. So Peter's uh, leap into the water isn't some act of uh, great hubris. Jesus calls him out and calls him to have faith. So we reflect upon our faithfulness in response to the call of Jesus Christ. So to prepare ourselves, we pray together. Almighty God, to whom all our hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, Before you offer your gifts, go and be reconciled. As brothers and sisters in God's family, we come together to ask our Father for forgiveness. Almighty God, our Amen. Heavenly Father, we, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in the newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Oh, I mean. Make them to ask such things as shall please you, 
through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We sit for our reasons. A reading from the first book of Kings, 19, 9 to 18. At that place he came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your pit waters, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? And he answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when you arrive, you shall anoint Haziel as king over Aram. Also you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat of Abel Mahola, as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes from the sword of Haziel, Jehu shall kill. Whoever escapes from the sword of Jehu, Elisha shall kill. But I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. This is the word of the Lord.
Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, for that is to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom, in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. This is the word of the Lord. He went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking towards them on the lake. But when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him and said to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
this test. Is my microphone working? No. Is it working now? No. Right, it's not going to work, I'm afraid. <laughs> May I speak in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? Amen. Amen. Are you feeling happy today? Are you happy to be in church and looking forward to leaving church on this lovely, slightly damp uh, August Sunday? Do you feel that your life is somehow falling short of what God wants of you if you don't feel happy? Happiness is seen by society as being the pinnacle of human ambition. In schools, after making children safe, it often seems that the next thing teachers want for their pupils is for them to be happy. Don't criticise them too much, because that might make them unhappy. When there's a competition, don't allow the winner to be happy at the expense of the losers. Instead, make sure that everyone has a prize, then they'll all be happy. At work, we grumble if we're not happy. There's something wrong with the job or the boss if you have boring or dispiriting work that makes you unhappy. After all, it's your right to be fulfilled at work and for bosses to ensure that you are happy at work. So if you're happier, but perhaps slightly less productive by working at home, instead of working in the office with your colleagues, then you should be entitled to work at home. If your boss won't give you that right, then leave the job. But then, the real world isn't like that. Even if you are fabulously rich, you aren't necessarily happy. All your wealth can present a lot of challenges and a lot of decisions at the very least. As Jesus said, no one can worship God and money. You must choose between them. If you have children, they're human beings and they won't always make you happy. We have all met people, or perhaps we've encountered these things ourselves, who are suffering from the pain of illness, accident, broken families, distant loved ones, redundancy, poverty, homelessness, and so on. And that's not even considering the millions of people around the world who are suffering. People such as in Ukraine and Afghanistan, Sudan and Yemen who suffer from war. People in China and Russia, Pakistan and Myanmar who suffer from the abuse of human rights. People in poor parts of the world who live in poverty and expect nothing else for their lives. And perhaps families like the family of Yusuf Muhammad, who sadly was knifed in Tishri Central last week. Today's readings supply a completely different story. However blessed you are by God, and Elijah and Peter were especially blessed, you won't necessarily be happy. We have the story of Elijah in our Old Testament reading. That great prophet of God, the man who accompanied Moses and Jesus on the mountain when Jesus was transfigured, as we heard last week. Twice he said to God in today's reading, I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Elijah lived in dangerous times. In Israel, the worship of God, the one and only God who said in his covenant, that he would look after Israel was threatened by another religion. The God of that other religion was Baal. Elijah reported to God that his own people, the Israelites, had forsaken God's covenant, thrown down their altars to God, and killed his prophets with the sword. I alone am left, said Elijah. Elijah had known great things from his God. Elijah had trusted God to look after him, but now he was terrified for his life. All that he had experienced didn't help him at this time of terror. He no longer believed that God would look after him. He'd almost lost his faith in God. Then he looked for God, and he felt the presence of God. God had appeared to Moses on the mountain and in a burning bush, but this time God appeared to Elijah in silence. What the English version we heard today says, 
the sound of sheer silence. The King James Version calls it a still small voice of calm. And then God spoke to Elijah, but he didn't say anything about making him happy. Instead, he gave him the instructions. One of them was that Elijah should anoint Elisha as prophet in his place. This meant, of course, that Elijah would then stop being God's chosen prophet for Israel. That can't have made Elijah happy. And after anointing Elisha, Elisha left this world. So Elijah was comforted, but not given the news that because he was God's great prophet, he would be happy. Now let's consider Peter. He'd shown himself to Jesus as an impetuous and emotional person, but who was really committed to following Jesus, even though he didn't always understand what Jesus was talking about. We know, of course, that Peter was the later appointed by Jesus to lead the church. We know the next stage, but here is the story about this stage, about a very terrified Peter. Peter was terrified just as Elijah was. Peter was terrified after Jesus had identified himself as he walked on water to get to the boat of the disciples. Jesus had said, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Now we know that the words, it is I, echoed God's description of himself, I am, he called himself. In John's Gospel, Jesus uses those words, I am, to signify that he is like God, even is God. So here beside the boat, Peter sees his master, who is calling himself, I am. Peter, like Elijah, has faith in his master. Elijah had had enough faith to pray for rain and for the destruction of all those uh, bulls that the Baal prophets were trying to burn. But nonetheless, he managed, with God's intervention, to get his bulls to burn in God's honour. But Peter's faith had limits too. He started out all right, but Matthew writes, when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and beginning to sink, he cried out, you of little faith, said Jesus. <laughs> Jesus reached out for him as he got Peter into the boat. Jesus saved Peter just as God had saved Elijah. Peter's faith was strong, strong enough to respond to Jesus' uh, invitation to walk on water. But when he saw the strong wind, he lost that faith. We think we have faith, but when the going gets tough, we give up. We lose our trust in God. We find ourselves feeling desperate. If this could happen to two such great men of faith, Elijah and Peter, who achieved so much in God's name, then it can happen to us too. Hasn't that happened to all of us? We can feel that our faith is strong when all is well, but when we're up against it, when things are turning out badly or terribly, it's easy to think that faith is pointless. As the unbelievers say, if there's a God, how does he allow all the suffering in the world? And indeed, if I am a reasonably good Christian, how can he allow me to suffer in this way? This affects our ability to show our faith to others, too. We want them to understand that being saved by God involves a sense of contentment and knowing how to deal with the world and what to expect from it. And then along comes disaster, and we can't maintain that. We can no longer show our friends and families that faith brings all that comfort. At that moment, faith seems to be useless. What's the point of all your church going and prayer? Let's not be ashamed of the times when we lose our faith. It happened to these two great men, and will happen to everyone. But we need to do what they did in response. Peter and the other disciples told his story to others afterwards, which enabled Matthew to write it down in his Gospel. They weren't so ashamed as to hide their unbelief. They wanted the world to know that, that the truth, that all of us, even Peter, are helped by God in our unbelief, but not necessarily helped to be happy. Perhaps we too can learn 
and tell others about our unbelief at times and the lessons we learn. Let's remember what Jesus, that Jesus didn't say. He didn't say, I come to make you happy. He said, I come to give you life and to make it abundant. A full life is not actually a happy life. The world doesn't work like that. What Paul said in today's epistle reading is also helpful. He says, if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart, and so is justified. One confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. It sounds simple. We say the words, we do every Sunday, we will shortly, when we say the creed, and believe in your heart. But there is a bit more to it, because Paul says later in this letter, that being saved involves responding with love and accepting that God is judge of everything. However, we have this promise, not of material comfort, not of restored health, not of safety from danger, but of God's presence. God will be with us. He will never fail to support us and be with us. If we call on him, and that's far better for me than the promise of happiness. So let us stand now and declare together the faith we share in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, its only begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Passionate God, we pray for all who are battered at this time by life. Today we pray especially for the people of Hawaii struggling to respond to a changing climate. We also think of migrants and refugees, those in danger and those who fear for them, as well as those who are adapting to exile in new places. for people in countries torn by war. We pray for those in poverty. We pray for the sick and especially for those who care for them 
especially where changing needs redefine lives. We pray for people who bear the invisible battery of difficult relationships, memories, anxiety or unhappiness. And we pray for those who grieve. Loving God, we can all be unmoored by what is thrown at us and rocked by the waves of life. Living God, come to meet us when we fear drowning and steady our souls in even the most uncharted waters. Make us proactive channels of your love to all of those in need. Lord, in your mercy. God of good news and of miracle, we pray for all who struggle to believe in possibility or transformation. We pray for those who are trapped in situations without easy answers. We pray for those who are disillusioned or unfulfilled. We hold before you people hurt by injustice or prejudice or failures of acceptance. Loving God, bring comfort and hope to all who mistrust your promises. And when fears take hold, let light break open new faith. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. God of adventure and of risk, we think of people who may be taking new steps into the open waters of their lives. We remember young people we know in our families and our communities. And we think of those who will make choices about their futures this coming week. Pray for all who are explorers at the edge of the known, especially in our collective life and our changing world. We pray for good initiative, for ingenuity and vision that expresses the best of human love and care. May we be voices of wisdom and encouragement. May we be kind supporters to those who travel to new places and seasons in their lives. May we be creative participants in all good work for a better world. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And God of the sheer silence, in this place today we pray for your church. Lead us from our cave-like enclosures of habits and convenience to listen at the edges. Remake us and remake our faith in times which are always new. Show us how to live and to work together with patience and compassion to clear paths of hope, that those who we meet might walk into your grace and peace. Merciful Father, I send peace to us for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. come to the, uh, the piece, uh, a sort of pre-notices, I meant to say something at the beginning of the service, I think there's been a, a little bit of confusion on um, hymns, so you can find hymn numbers, they're now up on the, uh, up on the boards, uh, which are uh, dotted around the church, 
Um, you can also find them on the uh, sheet that has the readings. So if you're following the green service book and it says him, uh, you'll be able to um, hopefully predict which of those uh, I'll just mention on the um, reading sheet it is. But if not, you can always uh, look up and see numbers on the, um, on the hymn boards. Um, uh, and if you want things even uh, uh, more easily set out for you, then uh, download the service onto, your, onto a device or scan the QR code as you come in and then uh, readings and hymns are all uh, seamlessly put together. Having said uh, this to, to try and dispel confusion, uh, we do have a bit of confusion during August because um, uh, we're singing two extra hymns. Uh, you'll notice we've sung one instead of a psalm, whilst the choir are on holiday. And there is a, a, a hymn during communion, uh, which is the one that's given, we've only got space for four hymns. We've chosen not to put the communion hymn on, on the boards. Uh, you can only find that on the, uh, on the readings sheet. So, um, uh, but the other uh, cunning um, shortcut you can have is that the hymn book is arranged alphabetically. So if, if, you, can't, if you don't have a, a reading sheet uh, and you recognise the hymn, you'll be able to find it. There's, uh, so many ways. Uh, the most important thing is don't be, don't be at a loss. Now let's stand for the peace. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who is sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us, and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing.
Now let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread.
Let us pray. God of our pilgrimage, you have willed that the gate of mercy should stand open for those who trust in you. Look upon us with your favour, that we who follow the path of your will may never wander from the way of life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. We have all sorts of things uh, coming up in the near future, um, uh, especially uh, on the 3rd of September, uh, a new uh, thing for us is the Blessing of Backpacks, um, it's a Sunday before school terms begin. Uh, so if uh, you have a child and would like to, uh, to uh, and they have a backpack of some sort, bring it along to be blessed. But it's not just for children, it's for adults as well. So if you have something that you use in your daily life, uh, whether it's something you take to work, something that you use at home, uh, bring that along too, because we'll, we'll bless those as well, as we uh, recognise that we are blessed and can be a blessing in the world. So, uh, blessing of backpacks, uh, not just for children, um, though it grows out of something, uh, an idea for school children. So that's on the 3rd of September. It's not going to be a whole service full of it, it's going to be just at the end of the service. So uh, think what you might like to bring along on that day. We have a date now for um, uh, a visit to St Albans Cathedral, um, a day of pilgrimage, um, and that is the 7th of October. Um, and uh, it sh they're, they're putting on some special things for us, including uh, a private tour of the cathedral. So uh, do let us know if you're interested in coming along and put that date in your diary. Uh, the various other things continue as usual. Um, the uh, English Conversation Group, Holy Communion in the Garden, Lectio Divina and Bible Study. Um, uh, there are, is more uh, seeking God coming up, and uh, uh, I think it will be on next week's so, uh, notice sheet. Uh, so do look out for things coming up in the near future. Um, uh, we are also going full speed ahead on our fundraising for the church and churchyard projects. Uh, we have um, uh, a, a bid in for the National Lottery, Heritage Lottery, and also for the National Churches Trust. And uh, uh, we're confident in all the submissions, and we'll let you have news as soon as uh, we're able to do so. Um, uh, but we're also, uh, therefore, focusing our, our fundraising in the congregation and in the community. Um, in, in our congregation, you can support through the sponsor of Slate, and uh, we're going to have a gift day um, and combine it with our Harvest Festival. So, uh, so don't bring tins for the roof. Uh, bring the tins for the uh, uh, for uh, homeless action Barnet, but do um, maybe uh, plan in a gift for uh, the, the the church and churchyard project. Um, there will be uh, other opportunities as well, and uh, we will hopefully visibly see our targets being achieved. So um, going into the autumn with great confidence. Do join us for uh, coffee, tea, um, and juice or water in the hall after this service, and we have our usual uh, Zoom prayers at 7 o'clock. I hope I've forgotten anything. I, uh, I think I might have been asked to do something else. There's just uh, have this vague anxiety I've forgotten something. If, if I have, uh, jump up now, otherwise. Uh, it will have to wait for another week. So let's sing our final hymn. The church is one foundation.
God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.